first of all, hello and how has everyone's uh, day been? Uh, I've uh, seen so many amazing speakers and uh, so many amazing uh, talks and chats. It's been awesome. So, um, Perfect, brilliant. I just wanted to get confirmation that I was live. So yes, I am live. Uh, so uh, it's great to have you here in the Scale Up Startup Hello, Summit. Um, how has everyone's uh, day been? Uh, I've uh, seen so many amazing awesome. speakers and uh... Ooh, not sure where that's coming from. So there was just a bit of feedback. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no feedback again. So let me just go back into this and hopefully uh, let's just see what's going on here. Have I just... Uh, so I'm just going to try and get the presentation back. So let's see what happens. Oh, I think I've just lost the presentation. So give me one second and I'll share again. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's happened there. So apologies for that. There we go. So there we go. We're back to normal. We're back to normal. Uh, brilliant. OK, so um, uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, my journey as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, today we find ourselves in a very, very uh, different uh, scenario. Um, so, yes, perfect. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Just doing a few techie checks there. So um, one of the things is so my talk was um, was titled uh, employee to entrepreneur, the road less traveled. Um, and the question I have for you is, why is that a, low, a, a road less traveled for so many people? So many people who have the desire and drive to want to go out there and actually start a business or indeed who start a business and then are faced with blocks along the way. So why is it a road that is less traveled? Um, is it perhaps because you're a little bit scared of the risk involved in starting a new business? Perhaps you are, you know, perhaps you think about um, all the capital. You're thinking, well, there's a, there's a lot of capital involved, a lot of money involved. So it's hard work starting your own business. Maybe you're somebody who thinks that you don't have a great idea. You think that your idea wouldn't work, there isn't a market for you. And so therefore don't ever, ever take the move towards that road. Perhaps for some of you, it's more about the fact that you don't think you have the right entrepreneurial um, sort of uh, risk. You don't have the guts to actually go out there and do it. Or perhaps you just don't think it's realistic, maybe realistic because of your uh, current situation, maybe realism, uh, realistic because you have bills to pay, you have a mortgage to pay, you have a family. So there's all of those things. But what you actually really want, you want to have something that you love waking up for every single morning. You're the type of person who wants to have a business that actually allows you to have more choice and more freedom in your life. It's also possible that what you really want is a role where you don't have to be controlled and managed all the time, where you get to make decisions that are right for you, where you are in control of how successful you are and there's no capped ceiling. So the question is, is if you're in that situation where you're feeling a little bit disempowered, you're feeling as if this isn't the right road, you're, you've reached a glass ceiling, or you want to do a business, but you're very, very fearful, and you're worried about how that's going, where that's going to go and how that's going to take. But where you want to be is in that place where you have got more choice and more freedom, where your personal goals and your professional goals are aligned, and where things are up to you. Your success is up to you, because now you're working towards your goals, uh, instead of working towards somebody else's. So the question is, how do you get there? Well, the reason I, I um, was so keen to do this particular topic is because I've been there. You see, it, 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 that was a case with me. I had, I had actually, um, uh, I've been brought up in an Indian household uh, where uh, there were some key beliefs that I adopted. And I say I adopted because these were the beliefs that I had. And I had them based on my environment, based on my, um, uh, you know, growing up. And those beliefs were that you had to work hard and you had to get a secure and solid job in order to be success. It was that employee mindset that I had. And that was because that would give me security for life. 
Those are the beliefs that were around me as I was growing up. And so that's what I adopted. Now, the funny thing is, is actually my dad, my father was a, a serial entrepreneur. He was somebody that had an entrepreneurial mindset and he actually took risks and took a lot of time out to start a business. And when it didn't work out, he was then due to his priorities of bringing up a family and bringing up, um, you know, an extended family. He was had to change his priorities and he would go out and get a job. But then he'd do it all over again. He'd leave the job and take the risk of going out there and working on a business, starting a business, and then he'd fail. Now, the interesting thing is the interpretation that I took from that was actually the uh, starting a business is actually not something that I want to do. It's not something that I want to risk because taking risks, like my dad was a risk taker, taking risks did not always favor the brave. And that's the interpretation in my mind that I took away. So I did exactly what was uh, expected of me. I went to university, I studied, I got a really great job and I worked 17 years in the corporate world. And I never really took that risk. Now, I, interestingly enough, my father, um, you know, 20, 30 years ago, then um, became ill. He became temporarily disabled, lo use it, losing the use of his hands and feet. And during that time, our family became even more financially strained and so therefore I took away even more that belief, that belief became even more strong to say that actually just go out and get a job. Because in my mind, if you had a job, there was no risk. And if there was no risk, things wouldn't go bad. But that actually isn't always the case, is it? In fact, that's hardly ever the case. And the interesting thing was, even though I took that interpretation away, my dad continued to start businesses and he continued to be a serial entrepreneur and he continued even after he was better he still continued to take risks so what was the difference now good job is is I did have an entrepreneurial bone in my body because today as we look at the climate as we live through these very adverse and unprecedented times these are probably some of the um, questions that you're asking yourself like is it worth the risk should I just try and get a secure job somewhere? Because the truth is, there is no security, is there? There's actually no security. It's moving things around around my computer. Uh, there is no security at all. Um, and we've seen that in these absurd times. So I, I wanna share with you what I learned over my entrepreneurial journey, because this road that I chose to travel, I chose to travel the road to get me from employee to entrepreneurship. And I wanna share with you six key essential ingredients uh, over the next 20 minutes or so that I've got left, uh, six key essential ingredients that really did change the way I saw entrepreneurialism. And it helped me on the road to entrepreneur. It helped me stay on this road less traveled because this road less traveled actually gave me the success that I wanted. So let's have a look at those things because you know, these six elements are just absolutely essential, not just crucial, but they are essential. So the first is uh, something that many, many people talk about, and that's your mindset. You see, an employee mindset is around safety. It's around um, security. Uh, an employee mindset is all about, you know, being having a safety net underneath you, having um, a, 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 a safety belt, if you like. But the entrepreneur mindset isn't. The entrepreneur, entrepreneur mindset is all about taking risks. It's about being innovative. And it's also about letting go of perfection. You see, what happens in our success as entrepreneurs is in our mind, we feel that we have to be perfect at things. So we take time to get going. We get We take time to actually do things because we feel that we have to have all the ducks in a row. We have to actually ensure that everything is perfect before we can even start a business. Let me tell you why that's not true, because I did that myself. In fact, um, when I first started the business, initially, I felt that every single part, every single duck had to be in a, a row before I could even start it. But that just prolonged my start and it just prolonged my success. So just think about it. What is it that you're going through? What questions are you asking yourself? 
because it was those things that were stopping me back. It was the things that I was saying to myself that was making me wait for perfection. But really, perfection paralyzes progress. Perfection paralyzes progress because perfection is just another word for procrastination. So you have to let go of perfection and be ready to make success. One of my mentors always said to me, you've got to fail your way to success. So let me ask you, are you willing to fail your way to success? Because really, there is no failure. There is only feedback. And as long as you take the feedback on when things don't go right, you will be able to respond in a much better way. You see, by having by trying to put all the ducks in a row, what you end up doing is you end up chasing clients because you end up being more of a in a more of a desperate state. So now what you do is because it doesn't work in the perfect way that you thought, you end up chasing clients, you end up looking for business, you end up, it ends up being very, very desperate. And so what happens is your mindset works from a place of lack. And when it works from a place of lack, what you end up doing is you basically will go in any direction that it takes you. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that you'll go, you'll take whatever job comes in, you'll take whatever contract comes in, whatever piece of business that comes in, and you'll drop your prices to get it, which means you are now competing on value. You're competing on price. So therefore, you devalue and deposition yourself. So when it comes to your mindset, it's really understanding that it's your mindset that makes a difference. So the question is, how do you change your mindset? How do you start to change that tape that might be going on in your head that's telling you that this isn't worth the risk? The truth is you've got to ask yourself better questions. Our human brain, if you imagine it to be like human Google, and when it's human Google, think of it. When you go on Google, if you said, give me all the shit holidays over 2020, it would find you as many references of shit holidays as it can, because that's what you asked it to find it. But if you actually typed in there, I want great holidays for 2020, it will show you references for great holidays. When you ask your brain better questions, the filing system that it searches through will come up with better answers. And that's when you stop thinking that everything doesn't work, nothing ever goes right for you. You've got to ask yourself better questions. So that is number one. Now, one of the things that often um, I get asked around mindset is, OK, well, this is great, but, um, you know, why is entrepreneurialism really a good place to start, especially when it's a bad climate? Should you really even start a business? Well, here are some companies that started a business in an economic downturn. So there was Hyatt, Hyatt Regency, the hotel chain. There's Microsoft, Groupon, GM Motors, Airbnb and Disney, they all started in an economic downturn. So I know what you're asking me now. You're asking me actually, uh, well, that's great. They started in a recession. So therefore their mindset was already set to work in a recession. What about businesses who have been hurt, for example, in this pandemic where they've already had a business and now they're suffering? So if you're a business like that and you're thinking there's no way out, well, let me tell you, these businesses, the following three businesses were businesses that actually were going well, were doing well when they started. And then what happened was they basically just uh, it's. So they basically the following three businesses, what happened was when they first started, uh, they were doing well and then they were hit by a recession. And when they were hit by a recession, they had to pivot in order to change. And here's the interesting thing. These were the businesses, Facebook, Google and Salesforce. They all had to pivot their business and deal with what they thought was great. Because the truth is, you can't control what is on the outside, can you? You can't control your external environment. The only thing you can control is what you actually do and how you actually respond. So that's mindset. And there's so much more I can cover on mindset, but I haven't, but I don't have that much time. So I want to leave you on mindset with this quote. You see, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Right. The next one is when it comes to starting a business or when it comes to your existing business, if you're already in business, 
how meaningful is that business to you? What do I mean for that? What do I mean by that? It means what does it mean to you? And what is your why? What is the purpose of your business? You see, when we start a business, often we either have a business that's based on just business goals and artificial or superficial, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, wants. But actually, you've got to align both your personal and your professional goals together. Because when you do that, what it means to you will also drive you. It will drive you to success. You see, many business owners and many entrepreneurs forget why they started their business in the first place. So here's a question for you guys who are watching this. Why did you start your business? And if you are starting one and you're thinking about starting one to go from employee to an entrepreneur, what was the reason you started yours? Or what is the reason you want to start yours? But give it a personal reason as well, not just a, a monetary reason, not just a financial reason. It's got to be about what it means to you, because whatever it means to you intrinsically is what will drive you. So make the business that you start, uh, make it meaningful, make it, make it mean something to you so that you can revisit your why, revisit your purpose every single time. The third element that is essential is the market, such an essential element that you probably heard it quite a bit when it comes to starting a business. Now, I want to look at two parts to this. I want to look at the product. And when I say product, I mean product or service and position. So let's look at the first one, which is product. Now, you may have heard the phrase is there a gap in the market? Now, that is such a crucial question. When you think about an idea or a concept or something that you're passionate about, that you want to start a business about, the question that you want to ask yourself is, is there a gap in the market? But that isn't the only question you should be asking, because you have to follow this question by this question. And that is, is there a market in the gap? Because the truth is, is that you may think that there isn't a gap in the market. You may think there is a gap in the market for something that you can create or a service that you can have, etc. But is there a market in that gap? Because otherwise you'd be trying to chase something that nobody wants. When you start a business, you have to make sure that there is a need for that business. So don't just ask yourself, is there a gap in the market? Ask yourself, is there a market in the gap? because then you align what you're passionate about with the monetary gain that you can get from it. The second thing is all about positioning. It's about standing out. It's about showing up. It's about the position that you have um, in terms of how you position yourself as the authority and expert in what you do. And here's something really important in this element. And that is, look, when you position yourself as an expert, don't just follow the crowd. Don't try and be something to all things and all men. It doesn't matter if you're not liked. It doesn't matter if not everybody buys your product or service because you want only want to attract people who are like you and who like you. And you do that by splitting opinion. The worst thing is, is to have 300 people who do not make a decision on whether you are the right solution for their problem. What you want is 100 raving fans of you because they believe you are the expert of choice in your industry. And then you also want 100 raving haters. You want both. Because remember, life is all about polar opposites. Where there's black and white, there's a color. Where there's up, there's down. Where there's right, there's left. So you've got to have both because that is what's going to drive you and help you stand out. If you just follow the crowd, then you will not stand out as somebody who believes in something. You've got to put a stake in the ground and say, this is what I believe in. When I started my business at the very first time, I uh, went out and I was uh, training recruiters and recruitment companies out there on sales, on um, communication skills, on NLP, all of those things. But what I wanted, what I had a massive, massive desire for was to change the way training was done in the recruitment industry, because I wanted to change the face of the recruitment industry. I wanted to change the perception of the recruitment industry. And that's the key thing when it comes to your position. 
Because the truth is, is when people are seeking you out, when people are searching for you, if you try to be everything to everyone, you're going to catch no one. And if you try to be something that you're not, then the perception that you want people to have, honestly, is not the perception that people will have of you, which means you will attract the wrong clients and you won't be successful in business. So that's that piece. The next piece is mentor. I'm just going to have a quick check to see, um, uh, make sure I'm not running over time. So perfect. So uh, the next part is, is you've got to have a mentor. Look, don't try and do everything yourself. Um, when I first started out, I was lucky in that I invested in myself. I invested in my mindset. I invested in learning about NLP, learning about how to change myself and my perception, how to uh, be more myself. I invested thousands and thousands of money in me. And the reason for that is because I knew that having um, investing in myself and my own personal development was going to be key in my success long term, because this is about a long term game. When you hear lots of people talk about how you can, um, you know, how make a million overnight, that's not necessarily all the truth. It's going to be hard work. So have a mentor because a mentor, first of all, has been through the mistakes and they'll show you what mistakes not to make. So that's the first thing that'll save you time, energy and money in the long run. And second of all, as a, the mentor, remember, they're there to hold your hand, to hold your hand along the way and tell you what you need to do. You don't want a mentor. You don't want a coach who's going to let you figure it out and make the mistakes. You want a mentor who's going to say, do as I say. So having a mentor is one of the key decisions. In fact, it was probably one of the best decisions I make, along with this other piece of business advice that I'll give you. And that is get a cleaner. If you're going in to be an entrepreneur, get a cleaner. That was the best business advice I got along with having a mentor. Having a mentor is somebody that you can bounce ideas off and you can always, always learn from because it's a forever learning, uh, learning journey. The fifth element, I think we're on the fifth element, is money. Now, people often believe that you have to have money to start a business. Look, when I started my business, uh, the company I worked for, they were... Uh, due to owe me £15,000, which I lost out on. And as a result of losing out on that money, what happened was, was I didn't have that capital to actually start my business. However, I got resourceful. So it's not about the capital that you have. It's about how you capitalize on what you do have. So I'm going to repeat that. It's not about the capital you have. It's about what how you capitalize on what you do have. Because when you look closely enough, the help and the resources are all around you. And actually you have it within you too. So get creative, get innovative on what you can do to get the capital, or if you can't get the capital, what you do to basically help you get your business started so you can get the capital to help you learn and develop more. And then the final M in all of this is all about motivation. Look, this is a word that is branded around a lot. It is basically said a lot of the time and people talk about it all the time. And uh, motivation is what you need to have. But motivation has to come from within. Uh, Dr. Uh, John D. Martini talks about how your values and your motivation and your desire and drive has to be intrinsically done. You have to be intrinsically motivated, not, not externally motivated, not ext extrinsically. You've got to be intrinsically motivated. What does that mean? That means that your drive and desire and passion to get where you want to has to come from within. You have to know your why, just like we discussed before, and you've got to know the end result. But the motivation has to not come from, oh, I want to have money to do that, because it's not about the money and where that takes you. It's about what that money gives you. So how motivated are you to get where you want to? Because uh, and do you have that inner motivation? Because look, the road to entrepreneurialism is not a straight road. It has its twists and it has its turns. And it continually faces you with challenges. You will always, always continue to have a challenge 
when it comes to uh, being an entrepreneur, as we've seen in this pandemic. So you need to be intrinsically motivated to be able to pivot. I know that word has been overused in the last six months, but it's, you've got to be intrinsically motivated to adjust, adapt and move around so that you can start to take the details that you need to, to get where you want to. So you've got to be intrinsically motivated. Don't do it because somebody else has asked you to do it. Do it because you know that's what you want. That's why your personal and professional goals have to be aligned. And, and, and you know, that's where, that's all of these six things has actually led me to become where, to be where I am today. Um, you know, as, as a, the reason for adopting all of these six elements, these six crucial ingredients is what helped me become a number one Amazon bestseller within 24 hours of my book being published on Amazon. I also, uh, you know, travel around the world. I travel around the world and I do presentations and I speak to thousands and thousands of people because I love talking about what I'm an expert in. I also created not just one business, but a number of, well, one business, but a number of services. And this is my latest business. And it's all about helping others become visible and be seen as an authority using LinkedIn. As a result, I now run workshops, albeit not live anymore, but I run workshops and I run mentoring training programs uh, because I continue to serve people the way that I want to serve them, because this is what is intrinsically driving me forward. And I was lucky, uh, I say I was lucky, I was actually uh, motivated enough to finally meet one of my bucket list, um, uh, uh, bucket list things, and that was to become a TEDx speaker, which I did last year. And now I love doing nothing more than working with my clients and helping them to achieve their goals uh, in, in terms of, you know, how to be more visible and attract more leads uh, by being seen as the authority and expert in their field. So I want to end with this. It's a quote that is really something that uh, resonates very, very highly with me. And that is that being realistic is the most common path to mediocrity. Because the thing is, if you've got an idea or a concept and you're holding back because you think that it won't work or you tell yourself it's not realistic or you tell yourself that this is something you could never do, where you want to adopt those six strategies that I've just talked about. And what you want to do is you want to innovate yourself out of mediocrity. Uh, and that, uh, ladies and gents, is the end of my presentation. Now, I know that there's been some questions that have come through. So I'm just going to uh, take a look at these and open up the chat box. Um, so, um, OK, so I think that does literally take me up to uh, half an hour. So let's go quickly with these questions. Question, would you say that entrepreneurs are not risk averse? And as a result, they don't define situations as mistakes or failure. They define them as learning opportunities. Yeah, that's a great question. So what I would say is um, uh, because um, entrepreneurs are risk takers, yes, what they do, look, generally in life, in life, if you're going to do anything, let's just take it away from entrepreneurism for a second. Whatever you do, and this is from um, uh, one of the panelists, whatever you do when it comes to uh, whatever you want to achieve, whatever you want to do, it, when there's failure, that is part of life. The thing is, if you don't learn from that, then how will you know how to respond or react differently in the future? So, yes. Um, entrepreneurs are definitely people who, um, you know, don't define situations as mistakes or failures because they don't see it as failure. They see it as uh, an opportunity to take a different route to. And, and that's happened to me. You know, sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. And rather than giving up and turning around, it's a bit like if you're in a sat nav, if you basically take a route and you go over to you know, you put in the sat nav the route that you want to go go in and then suddenly there's roadworks in the way. You don't just turn your car and drive back home. What you do is you find a different route and that's what entrepreneurs do. So, yeah, that's great. Um, 
what motivates you to travel that road on days when the going is hard? What a great question. And obviously, we've all experienced that over the last six to eight months, for sure. Um, and again, it goes back to something that I mentioned. Because of what I want, because my personal values are connected to my uh, professional goals, my personal goals are, I have a little three year old niece, uh, who is the most gorgeous girl. Um, and, um, you know, I have a extended family. And, and my mum, my parents, my brothers, etc. I love spending time with them. And I love the choice. I love the choice of being able to go outside and on a on a on, you know, a Monday afternoon deciding that I'm not going to I'm not going to work because I instead I'm going to spend have lunch with friends or whatever it might be. Um, but also what motivates me is I want to be successful so that I can have the life that I want. I want to earn a passive and semi-passive income so that I can then make the choices I want to in life, whether that choice is to work harder, whether that choice is to bring my business, to scale my business, whether that's choice is to have a lifestyle business, it doesn't matter. And you don't have to be a millionaire to be successful. I want to put that forward. You can be successful just by being a success in terms of what it means to you. So I hope that answers that. Um, so that was uh, there. Uh, let's have a look. Let's go. Uh, uh, great and very important. Uh, so, guys, question. I have a question. A great presentation with loads of valuable content. And and how do I attract my first client without a track record? And how do I stand out from other coaches and consultants out there? Um, again, what a great question. So, I think that's from Rajesh. Is that right? Um, so, um, okay, so first of all, I mean, uh, those are two questions that are very, very large. So um, hopefully we'll be able to connect at some point, um, you know, uh, and I'll be able to go through that. So how do you how do you attract your first client without a track record? Look, the truth is, is that you will have a track record in something that you do, because either you are your first client. So in whatever business, especially as a coach or a consultant, you either worked on yourself first, which means you are the track record, or you might have helped friends or family with something. So you do have a track record. And again, it's about asking the right questions, Rajesh, because as a coaching consultant, you would have helped yourself or somebody else that gave you the skills or the idea to be a coach in a particular area. And then the second part of your question was, how do I stand out from other coaches and consultants out there? You've got to share your knowledge and know-how. Do not be afraid to share your knowledge and know-how. And, you know, uh, thank you, um, Melanie. Melanie said, I've got a couple of minutes left. So, um, so if you've got any more questions, if anybody's got any more questions, then please feel free to put them in. I've got a couple of minutes to be able to do this. So Rajesh, back, back to you, my darling. Um, it's all about, um, you know, speaking your truth, being authentic, um, uh, showing people what you do, not being afraid. People think that if they give away their secret sauce, and this is actually because my, uh, my ideal audience are actually coaches, trainers, consultants, mentors, and entrepreneurs. And one of the things that I find very, very all the time is that they're afraid that if they give away their secret sauce, then um, nobody's going to want them. But that isn't the truth. The truth is, is that the more knowledge and value and the know-how that you share in terms of the what and the why, then the more people will want to work with you. So don't. So you do have a track record, Rajesh, and you definitely, definitely would be able to stand out. It's all about showing up, serving and selling because you can't do one without the other. You can't serve without selling. So don't be afraid of selling because you can't sell without serving. You've got to do both. Don't be afraid to sell. Um, but yeah, you've got to show up. So I think that's probably my time up, I would imagine, unless there's any other questions that have come up. So um, it's been really awesome, but I really do want you to remember this quote, being realistic is the um, most common path to mediocrity. Perfect, thank you very much. I appreciate, um, appreciate that. <laughs>